We all know that Bruce Tim is a very, we'll say, complex and strange individual. That's the easiest way to say this. But no one thought that he fell this far off the face of the earth. Bruce Tim says the reason why they gender swapped Penguin is, and I quote, the Batman does not have female villains. Oh, Bruce Tim, how the mighty have fallen. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I am just going to use an example of some of the characters that would have been implemented much better into the Cape Crusader 1940s show, or 40s-esque, as they like to backtrack now, when originally when they made the show, they said this was going to take place in the 1940s, but now the narrative has changed, and it is 1940s aesthetic. So they're basically saying, hey, you know that thing, like the animated series? Well, more or less, that's what we're doing, except no technology, but we are introducing things for modern, modern audiences. audiences insert echo later um so let us begin this fun little video by opening the floodgates of discussion do you believe bruce tim still has his head on straight or is he a pander monkey let me know in the comments section below now i thought it was rather strange that timmy would say that Batman doesn't have that many female villains because here's the uh, kicker, ladies and gentlemen. Did you know that the Batman animated series team, when they, quote, ran out of the big profile female villains, they did something revolutionary. Not, not really. All they did is they created new characters to have Batman fight, and these were female characters. Now, as far as I know, um, most of these characters never appeared in media outside of Batman the animated series, meaning they originated from Batman the Animated Series. The number one character that was included in Cape Crusader was a Batman Animated Series creation by Paul Dini, and that was Harley Quinn, even though you could argue that the Harley Quinn that we have in the Cape Crusader show is nothing like the Harley Quinn that was created by, you know, the Animated Series people, and you are correct. In fact, Harley Quinn's mannerisms and Harley Quinn's ideas and her ideology and her beliefs are completely backwards of that of Harley Quinn, the New Jersey-style, talking, rude, obnoxious, fun-loving character that Dini and company created. It would have been nice if the new Harley Quinn at least would have had an exaggerated Jersey accent, but there is no semblance of anything of Harley Quinn in whatever this freak is. And basically, I can tell you what Harley Quinn is in the new show. She's the Mad Hatter. She manipulates, uses, and controls people through mind control, just like the Mad Hatter. The only difference is, she wears a Jester costume. But everything that she does, her idealism, and everything she's striving for to take money away from rich people and punish them, is very similar to how the Mad Hatter mind-controlled people he didn't like and make them do whatever he wants. Is she a bad character in the show? No. Um, but she is a character that was included in the animated series that was brought over to the Cape Crusader and transformed for that. Another character that was new to the series was Nocturna. So let's talk a little bit about Nocturna. So Nocturna is a character that hasn't appeared in Batman media before, and usually she is a voluptuous vampire-like creature that sucks the essence uh, from both uh, men and women, needs their life force in order to survive. Now, we haven't gotten to my actual episode review for Episode 8, and like I said, Episode 8 is a good episode. It's mostly Bruce Wayne-centered. But Nocturna is weird. Usually we have a older adult lady who's going around sucking the life essence from people, but here we have a teenager that is sucking the life force out of children. And it's creepy. In fact, every time she did that in the episode, I was just thinking, why isn't she going after adults? Why is she targeting other children? It's weird. And once again, when you see who the executive producer of the episode is, it's like, ah, Bruce Tim. <laughs> Harley Quinn, of course, animated series Nocturna is a vampire-like character from the DC Universe. And uh, I'm sure they're saving Ivy and uh, some other characters, but I just wanted to go over just some of the creative aspects of the animated series with you guys real quick. Now, again, as I said at the beginning of this video, when they didn't have a female character that they could use, Bruce Tim and Paul Dini would create one that worked for the universe they were in. 
And let's talk about four of those characters that actually would have worked well in the Cape Crusader. Uh, one comic book character in particular we'll speak about later on, which is Magpie, which I'm sure some of you are like, what, Magpie? It's like, yep, Magpie would have worked well in the Cape Crusader over a gender-bent penguin, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. Let's focus on the brand new characters that Paul Dini and Bruce Tim created in order to have Batman face off against them. First off, Baby Doll. Baby Doll was a character that was very tragic because it was this actress who played this uh, little girl on television, and secretly she was in her 20s or 30s. She had a medical condition that prevented her from aging, so that she would literally be the same size all the time. Um, she tried desperately to get roles that were older, and she tried to get out of that, you know, audience mentality of her being a little kid, but it wasn't her fault. You know, she was born that way, and this made her turn to crime. It's also a very sympathetic character for Batman to interact with because Baby Doll is a very sad character. You feel for her. Even though she's evil, she was turned evil because of her not being able to age. And uh, when you see her in the giant mirror and her reflection of her being an adult, that really hits home to the audience. Now, again, that episode was written by Baldini, someone who's actually worth his salt in talent. And if Bruce Timm did it, well, he would find some way of mucking it up. But that's besides the point. Baby Doll would have been a fantastic character they could have implemented, especially the horror aspect of the character, into the Cape Crusader over Gender Bent Penguin. That's one. Another choice, Roxy Rocket. Now, Roxy Rocket is a character that was created for the new Batman Adventures comics by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm, which was a spinoff of Batman the Animated Series. And then when the show came back, Roxy was incorporated into the show as a, uh, I think she was in two episodes, one with um, Batman and one episode with Superman. Her whole thing is she steals from the rich uh, that have like very high up places um, that, you know, most burglars wouldn't be able to get to because it would require you to go really, really high up. So she basically steals from skyscraper people. That's her stick. Now, how this would work in the Cape Crusader is give her a rocket pack and basically make her rip off of the Rocketeer. Fans would probably appreciate the homage, and also it would be different than just your traditional cat burglar. Batman would have to find ways of really apprehending this person, since she would be using the technology of the day. Her bomber jacket and other things could be very reminiscent to World War II. Also, you could make her, maybe she's trying to get revenge for her dead uh, fiancé or something who died in the war or something. There's lots of little ways that you could tweak it to make Roxy work in the setting for the Cape Crusader over Gender Bent Penguin. Moving on to the next character, Red Claw. Now, Red Claw is a Russian character that is out to destroy the world. No, I didn't mince my words. I said Russian. Now, here's a little trivia that you guys don't know. In Batman the Animated Series, the nationality of Red Claw is never disclosed. It's left very ambiguous. Sometimes she sounds British, sometimes she sounds French, sometimes she sounds German, and sometimes there's a little bit of a Russian accent there. So. Is the Red Claw Russian? In my interpretation of the character for this uh, Cape Crusader show, yes, she would be Russian. Um, instead of the red bodysuit and ninja skills, uh, those would be removed in favor of more of a military look that is trying to destroy the world. Since the show most likely takes place around 1946, 1947, things with Russia was starting to dissolve with the US, and of course we entered into the Cold War not long after. So this could be a precursor to that. And she could just look like a normal, like, Russian soldier, but maybe with a mask or something to make her stand out. Also, you could make her a big, stronger character, kind of like uh, Sophia Falcone or something like that, which is, you know, she's usually a very big, imposing character. So you could probably get away with something like that. Not to the same grounds as Bane, but um, Russian chicks are pretty big, so you could probably uh, do that naturally without having to go the route of gender-bent penguin. Um, next up, some Asian representation that would have worked much better than race-swapping Harley Quinn. I'm, of course, talking about Lady Shiva. Now, why would Lady Shiva be such an interesting character for the world of the Cape Crusader in the 1940s? Or rather, the aesthetic of the 1940s. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I know that the show doesn't have any connection to the 40s whatsoever because the writing just goes all over the place. But that's besides the point. Lady Shiva... She would be a fantastic character. Why? For one, she's an authentic Asian character, and she comes from a part of the world that Batman might not be too familiar of in the 1940s. 
Now, this Batman, his fighting style is very, we'll say, Western. Uh, mostly consists of some boxing, some grappling. He doesn't really use a lot of Asian martial arts. In fact, he probably, this version of Batman hasn't really traveled the world to do that stuff. He's more of a local Batman instead of a global one. Most of his stuff that he learned was probably things like you would get at Harvard or maybe Yale and, you know, on the street stuff like pickpocketing and, you know, whatever a millionaire was able to get a hold of bookwise. So I very much doubt that he is a globe trotting Batman that went to like um, different parts of Asia and stuff like that. Also, if uh, it was wartime and stuff like that, it wouldn't be very easy for Batman to travel to these other places. So him coming to blows with a character like Lady Shiva, who's a deadly martial artist, I mean, that would be a very interesting story you could have told because Batman would not be familiar with that type of combat. Now, of course, because it's a Batman show, Batman would win. But in my take of the character running into Lady Shiva, he would take a lot of licks from her uh, because he wouldn't be very familiar with how to combat or even counter a lot of her attacks. So that right there uh, would be a very interesting, um, you know, confrontation for Batman, as well as it opens up the door to more Asian characters in a future sequel. So those little, like, um, you know, breadcrumbs could have been amazing instead of Gender Bent Penguin. Are you noticing a theme here? The people responsible for the Cape Crusader are creatively bankrupt, have no imagination, as well as they just want to make excuses to appease the modern audiences. Which is a phantom, by the way. The only people that are technically modern audiences are the critics and some weirdos on Twitter. Most uh, sane people um, would actually like to see Batman characters adapted properly and used the correct way. Gender bending and gender swapping characters never goes very well, even in Elseworld settings, because it doesn't stick. People want to see the real character, but in Elseworld situations. You know what I mean? So, doing what they did with Penguin was super lazy and stupid, and it got a reaction. The reason why it got a reaction from people is because people didn't want to see that. People wanted to see a 1940s Penguin, which we never got to see. Instead, we got this weird version of Bruce Timm's <laughs> strange mindset of what a large heavy set ambiguous woman that looks like a man in lipstick as penguin so yeah they could have incorporated actual characters that bruce tim helped create and it's sad that bruce tim doesn't have any creativity left in his little pinky finger because he could have made a new female character some people are like well he did make someone new nocturna no nocturna is actually from dc comics so no um bruce tim was just kind of flipping through books and he didn't want to bring in Poison Ivy or the more established female characters so that he could have an excuse to change the Penguin. And the last character that we're going to talk about, because I really don't want to bring up the farm character. Uh, that was another uh, Bruce Tim and Paul Dini creation that didn't really work well. The um, farmer and his kids, I never liked that. It was a weird episode of The New Adventures where I think her name was Sally May or whatever. She had super strength and... Um, they were making these mutated monsters to attack Gotham and Steel and stuff like that. It was just a weird one-off character. It never really gained any traction, so I don't see a reason to bring her up again other than just to, you know, use it as an example. A perfect character that would have worked in the setting of the Cape Crusader as a female villain that was designed as a female villain and is hardly ever used in Batman media would be Magpie. Now, Magpie had a very interesting modern take for the character in the Beware the Batman show which the whole point of that show was to utilize characters that weren't well known. For the most part, the Cape Crusader um, just changes up well-known characters and makes them worse, like they did with Harley Quinn. She's Harley Quinn in name only, not in personality, not in voice, not in attire, nothing. She doesn't even wear the right color scheme. She wears like this orange medieval jester thing when if they were really being stunning and brave, they could have made a more like Asian looking Harley Quinn um, that would focus on, you know, what they would perceive a court jester or like a geisha or something like that. Uh, that would have been a different take on the character, but nope. Kind of like what they did in the whole Batman Ninja thing. That would have been interesting. But no, Magpie would really work because Magpie could have been like a ex like cigarette girl at a casino that maybe, you know, Penguin like uh, spurned her and she's out for revenge and she hits up Falcones or some type of organized people and it's up to Batman to take her down. You could have like a whole sob story involved with the character of Magpie and she would work in the setting of the 1940s. 
In fact, most of the women that I described in this video could easily match the aesthetic of the 1940s because that's where the characters were inspired by, that design from Bruce Timm's like 50s like style. Now Magpie is a character that appeared before the animated series so she was just never really utilized that much at all. She appeared in a Batman Superman team up book and something else and she's never really made appearances that much. She usually gets killed off pretty easily. But the three animated series characters I mentioned all would have had a much bigger impact and fans probably would have been happy because here you would be building up real female voices instead of changing men to become female. But we all know the reason why you did that. It's to echo a narrative. And that's the only reason. So there you go. Now I want to hear from all of you guys and gals. How do you feel about what Bruce Timm did with the Penguin? Do you think he's correct in saying that there's no female villains that he could have used in the Cape Crusader? Are you surprised that he just didn't create new female villains? like he and Paul Dini did in the 90s, which today some characters haven't even been incorporated into the comics when they were literally created like 30 plus years ago. I always find that strange. They say there's not enough female voices, yet they go out of their way to silence real female voices and female characters that were created for the point of being female. It's just a funny take for me. But yeah, let me know how you feel about all this. Uh, I'll be back with another discussion video as we <laughs> dive into Warner Brothers' new announcement, how basically... Um, they're going to start outsourcing their games, which is something they should have done in 2015. And uh, it's nice that they've finally gotten some common sense for once. But we'll be talking about that extensively later this week. Uh, thank you guys so much. My reviews of the Cape Crusader will return uh, sometime this week and weekend. I did lose my voice for a little bit, so it made uh, finishing up some of those reviews challenging. As I do add some post-narrative um, uh, to those videos uh, if like the flow of the video isn't really going the way I want or maybe I hit a point too hard that might confuse people but um yeah thank you guys for watching have a great day and uh, feel free to uh, discuss in the comments below until uh, we meet again keep it locked here for more news and videos on anything Batman and TV movie video games and comics when they don't suck and Bruce Tim get creative